To Rebelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo. Here's your host, best selling author, marketing and media strategist, Ralph Brogdon. Hello and welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. It's the show that helps you build the business you need so you can live the life you want. I'm Ralph Brogdon. Have you ever had the experience where you start a new diet or you start a new exercise routine, a new workout routine, and things are going great, you're making excellent progress, you're excited about the results, and then you take a trip, you go on a vacation or you go on a business trip or you go somewhere and all of a sudden you're not in your usual space you're not in your usual routine. And what happens? Your diet goes out the window. Your exercise regimen is disrupted. And then you get back home and all of a sudden you feel like that you have lost significant momentum. It's hard to get back where you were. That's a common problem. That's happened to me lots of times. And so I'm really excited to welcome today's expert, Jen Whitmore. She is an ACSM certified personal trainer with 12 years and, and more experience in weight loss instruction, boot camp training, and teaching aerobics, water aerobics, swimming, and cycling. That's wonderful, and I really welcome that. But what's really unique about Jen is she is the creator of Road Warrior Wellness Concierge, and she's going to help you to maintain your nutrition and your exercise even while you're on the road away from home and outside of your usual routine. So I'm really pleased to have you, Jen Whitmer. Welcome. Hi, how are you? I am doing great, and I'm really looking forward to getting your tips and your strategies for how we can stay healthy and fit even when we are traveling. Uh, you, you are you definitely have lots of experience, over 12 years' experience in teaching uh, weight loss instruction, all kinds of personal fitness training. You're a certified personal trainer. How did you get into personal fitness? What's your story? Yeah, well, thanks so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. I'm also glad to be here with you, Ralph. And um, so to answer your question, um, I actually got married really young. And then directly after that, I found myself pregnant. And so it wasn't, you know, we hear that joke about that freshman 15 that we all put on um, during college. Um, it was more like I was married and then pregnant. And so that's where my 15 came from, plus a little more. And so after I had my daughter, I was in the need for like losing weight. And so um, I actually started working at the local gym because if you are an employee, in most cases, you get a free membership. And so because I had grown up in sports and now I was working at the gym, I was trying to figure out how my own journey was going to go. And so once I started working at the gym, I really just never left. And so I've been doing it for a really long time now. <laughs> that sounds like a great story. And yeah, I can I can bear witness to the truth of, of adding extra weight in school. I, I, I think mine was mm -hmm. more than 15 pounds. Uh, <laughs> I guess it affects different people differently. Um, but so you've been doing personal training for a long time. Um, you've been you've taught aerobics, water aerobics, swimming, cycling. So you're very active and, and fit. Where did you get the idea to create Road Warrior Wellness? Um, so actually, because I was already in the fitness world, you know, my parents are entrepreneurs. I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. Um, and I was always thinking up, you know, the next latest and most idea. And a few years ago, my husband got a new job that actually requires him to travel a lot more than we had actually anticipated. And so because we were now in this world of travel, uh, you know, we made friends who also travel for work, you know, lots of different couples, you know, men and women that have these jobs that require them to be away from their family so mm -hmm. much. And I think, um, you know, in today's modern society, 
that a travel component is is really starting to become mandatory for job options. You know, people want people who are willing to travel. And so that was sort of where the idea was sprung from, um, you know, depending on how everybody, you know, has their views. Um, I definitely would like to give credit where credit is due. You know, I do believe that God gave me the idea, but just in general, um, you know, it, it started down that path from when my husband got that new job of traveling and I saw how much traveling affected people's health. Um, because I'm already in that field, I could see how frustrated they were when they would make these efforts, but because of their travel schedule, they were basically just too far out of their element too often. So whether you're someone that travels on the regular, you know, a couple of times a month, or if you're someone who travels once in a blue moon, the problem didn't change. You know, I I started to notice you're either home enough to get yourself going on a, you know, health and wellness journey. And then as soon as you take that trip, you lose it. Or at the other end of the spectrum, you are somebody who travels so often that you can't find the time to get yourself onto a routine at home because you're just not there enough. And so when you're not there enough and you're gone so much because you aren't used to where you're going, because for the most part, you know, people will travel to different places. There are obviously some exceptions to the rule, but when you travel so much, you're going somewhere else and you don't know these places, you're out of your comfort zone. You don't know where to eat. You don't know where to exercise. So the list kind of goes on from there. Hmm. So, so who, who do you work with? Who would be a, a ideal prospect for you? in terms of you being able to work with them, customize their, their needs and give them the best results possible. Is there an an ideal client that, that you really work well with? Um, Yeah. So we, we do have sort of a wide range of people, but the very bottom line would be people that travel for work. Now we do have, you know, of course a couple vacationers here and there, um, people that want help, you know, maintaining while they're on vacation. But otherwise, it's mainly people who travel for work. And it is because this demographic, um, excuse me, demographic of people, they are so busy that they just, they can't focus at the end of the day on things like this. They are too busy. They're too jet lagged. They're too tired. And then usually when they're finished for the day, they go back to their hotel and work some more on their computer. So we are basically trying to make their health and wellness as convenient as possible for them because we know these things aren't going to change. You know, their lifestyle isn't going to change. Their family is counting on them. They need their job. And unless they make a major shift, you know, this is basically the life that they are living and we want to make their health work for them the best way that we possibly can, mm. because obviously they're going to need it in the long run. Yeah. I mean, it, it's so important. Um, it, it's, it's one of those things. It's like Stephen Covey talks about the things that are important, but not urgent for most people. Their yeah. physical health isn't that urgent unless there's some kind of a, of a crisis going on. They get a diagnosis or, or something. It's easier to, let our physical health slip or at least not pay attention to it because we're in the moment we're producing, we're traveling, we're doing things, whether it's in business or in pleasure. Um, so it, it doesn't really come to the forefront unless we decide to make it a priority. And then the question becomes, how do we fit this in with everything else that we have going on? Is there in, in, in your experience, is there a best way to approach this? Does it need to be first thing in the morning before we get burdened with the the routines of the day? Or does it vary according to the needs of different people and, and their rhythms? What 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 is your experience with that? Yeah, so basically I am someone of the thought process that you are going to have your best results if you get up early. And the reason for that is, is because if you get up early and get it done and get it out of the way, 
then there are no more excuses. You know, it's done, it's finished. But in the same thought line, you know, it depends on if you're a lark or if you're a night owl, you know, I'm a lark. I want to get up and get it done because I know after lunchtime, it is, it's not going to happen for me. You know, I'm, I'm tired. I've, you know, got the kids to deal with after they come home from school, you know, then it's homework and dinner and sports. And by the end of it, I'm tired and I'm not going outside to go run or anything else. I do it in the morning. My husband, on the other hand, is the complete opposite. Of course, isn't that always true? I'm always (laughs) very our opposite. Yeah. Um, But he is the complete opposite. He would rather get his beauty sleep go to work and then just deal with it when he gets home. And, and honestly, he's pretty good about it. Um, you know, he, he likes to run. And so he is very, uh, motivated, I guess would be the word to get that done. And I'm not, you know, I'm like, I, if it doesn't happen in the morning, oh, well, it's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, you know, sometimes that is the issue that we all run into, especially, you know, along the lines of travelers, because we have, you know, early flights and we don't have the availability that we would always like. And so, of course, you know, that's what we're trying to do is give them a lot more control back into their lives. So, yeah, I think, you know, bottom line answer to your question is that it just really depends on the person. Yeah. So so that that would that really underscores, I think, the importance of having a concierge like you to really evaluate their needs and and come up with a with a custom uh, program so that it, it fits with them. It works with their schedule. And it also is is cooperating with how they are either morning person or afternoon evening person whenever that rhythm of their personal and emotional uh, energy is at its peak absolutely what can we begin to do let's say hey this sounds great by the way I, i think that Anything we can do to get order and structure and take care of our bodies is going to make us more productive. If if we feel better, we're going to do better work. So I I think most people uh, listening to this recognize the importance of it. What are some strategies, some self-help tips that you can give us and give our listeners that if they're listening to this right now and they're on the way to the airport, <laughs> they want to maintain some kind of a, of a regimen, either with their diet or with their workout routine while they're on the road. Is there some some help that you can give them in, in terms of practical steps to begin to think about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you're someone who, in answer to your question, is on the way to the airport right now, you know, my um, basis would be to just go for less. You know, I'm like, there, there's so much more of our lives, our jobs, our, our social lives, you know, everything is just more, 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 more all the time. And so, especially when it comes to our health and wellness, you know, we drink too much. We stay out too late with clients. We eat too much. You know, we go to a new place and we want to know what this city, you know, town has available for food. You know, everybody has their thing that they're uh, popular for, you know, for their food. Right. Like, you know, Buffalo is for Buffalo wings. You know, Chicago is pizza. They're deep dish. You know, everybody has their thing. And so when we travel, even though it's for business, we, we tend to fall into that mindset of vacation mm. and I deserve this and this is my break time. And unfortunately, if we're a business traveler, that's not really the case. And so I would say just go for less, you know, don't eat as much. If you want to sample whatever that city has to offer, you know, go for it. But don't eat five pieces of pizza, you know, don't eat 30 (laughs) buffalo wings, don't have 10 drinks at dinner. You know, I'm like, you, you, especially with traveling, you know, you sit a whole lot, and you're jet lagged a whole lot. So rest more, eat less, you know, just just go for less in your overall life until you can get back home. And then once you get back home, then the question applied would be to start making an effort at home. Because even if you lose it when you're on the trip, you've still made those efforts at home versus no efforts at home, no efforts on the trip, and then go back home to no efforts. And then again on a trip, no effort. So if you just start (laughs) somewhere you know, then we're, then we're going to be going in the right direction. Mm, that that makes a lot of sense. 
Um, and, and we may, I, I think probably you would, you've seen this over and over again with your clients. It's very possible that we, we fall off the wagon every time we leave town. And, you know, hopefully that doesn't happen very often. Uh, but I think it's, don't you think it's realistic that most people, even if they are in a great place at home, when they're traveling, things are going to be, not as as pristine as we would like. And so your plan kind of accommodates that and says, just maintain the best you can while you're at home and at least try to carry some of that momentum with you on the road. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why we are, you know, a concierge service, because we are trying to, like I said earlier, these these types of people are just so busy so we are trying to make this portion of their life, which is really the most important, as convenient as possible. And and I'll give you a quick example. You know, if you go somewhere, let's say to a small town, you know, they're having some kind of conference and there's a small town that you're going to end up staying in. Well, you know, you might not have as many healthy options as you would if you were staying in a hotel that was in a bigger city. But that's where we come in and we're going to help you navigate that. You know, obviously, we're not going to be able to pull things out of thin air, but we're going to set you on the right track for where you are. And of course, that, you know, applies to all the places. But, you know, obviously, depending on where you go, some uh, food choices are better than others. Some hotel gyms are better than others. And so as the concierge service, We're going to navigate all of that for you. So you literally need no brain power, (laughs) no brain power used. (laughs) We're just going to do it all for you. And all you have to do is eat it. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that that sounds really, really tempting because I think a lot of the problem with feeling overwhelmed and having too many choices is you just don't know where to start. So working with someone like you would really help someone get to where they want to be faster by taking all of the of the thought process out of it. If you have to figure it out in the heat of the moment, you're probably not going to make a good decision. You or if not you, somebody needs to make those decisions before you get to them. So when you get to them. It's not such a big temptation. It's not a battle. You don't feel overwhelmed and you make good choices. One of the examples on your website is to pack your own snacks for your flight. Um, That's a great example. Tell us a little bit more about the the value of that. Yeah, when you, um, you know, of course, speaking um, from past experience, when you get to the airport, of course, depending on which airport you go to, where I live, our airport is is pretty small. You know, there's only like two or three choices to eat. And guess what? They're not open 24 hours. So if I show up really early or arrive really late, guess what? I'm not eating anything. And then I'm completely out of luck, you know? Mm-hmm. So packing your own snacks is not only going to help you um, control the amount that you're eating, but it's also going to help you control the quality of what you're eating. But then, too, whether you're going to eat at all. You know, there's a whole lot of um, <laughs> options like that or, or airports, rather, where we, we can't control those things. We can't control early flights or delayed planes or late arrivals when things aren't open. And then you have to consider, you know, the quality of what you're getting. You know, you can go stand in line at any kind of convenience store at the airport, but that doesn't mean that you're going to have a whole lot of healthy choices available. And so, you know, we know that there are rules as far as airplane, um, you know, like liquids and the things that you're allowed to bring is what I'm trying to say. Um, You know, if you're a traveler, you are experienced, you know, all these things, but you know, you're allowed to bring some food. So pack your own, pack your own snacks. That's so, that's so valuable, especially it seems like every year, you hear some horror story of a plane that is stuck on the runway, even though it's supposed to be against the law, they'll keep them stuck on the runway for eight hours, 12 hours. So packing your own food is kind of a great idea. I got stranded in Seattle once and all the flights were canceled, but I had my snacks and I had food to eat, even though um, it, it was hard to come by. 
if you're not prepared. So uh, this is important. I mean, it just makes good sense even for traveling, uh, much less to have healthy options. And it it seems like when we when we travel, it, it's like we, we go into a different mode. You talked about seeing it as uh, as like a vacation or a pleasure trip. And it, it's like because we're traveling, because we're going to the airport, we we skip all of our uh, the, the breakfast that we should eat that we usually eat. And we just go to the airport and grab something there. It's like it's OK, but you wouldn't do that any other time. It's like something mm-hmm. shifts on the inside and says, well, it, it's it's OK, uh, even though it, because you're in a different mode. So what so what you're trying to get us to think about, as you said, go for less um, and and be prepared in advance. Start your efforts at home and carry that momentum on the road. Really, it's about making a, a lifestyle choice that pervades wherever we are, wherever, whatever we happen to be doing, whatever mode of transportation, we've made a lifestyle choice and that helps to guide us in the heat of the moment. Absolutely. You got it. What are you working on right now, Jen, that's got you really excited that you'd like to share with our listeners? Oh, yes. I am very excited right now. We are working on implementing accountability services to our wellness itineraries. And so I'm actually not sure if we um, went over that earlier. So when you um, call us, we build you what we call a wellness itinerary. And we are now um, in the works of getting accountability services added to those. And they are already um, available on the website. We're just kind of testing them out, though. And the reason for that is is the same reason that people fall off the wagon when they're at home, you know, much less, you know, when they travel. It, you need uh, the majority of the population needs the outer motivation. You know, I hear people, it, it's the number one complaint that I get as a trainer is that I'm just not motivated. Those words come out of almost everybody's mouth. I'm just not motivated. You know, they need some kind of outer motivation. And I am not immune to this. I I am in that same category. And depending on how you find your outer motivation, you know, is up to you. But we are working on adding that accountability service for that reason. And the way that we will be implementing that is that we will be able to keep in communication with our clients while they're on the road. So, and of course, they get to customize that as well as we are a concierge service. Um, So we will not pester them, you know, when they don't want to be told what to do. And when (laughs) they do, we will, you know, because sometimes we just need that. Like, hey, uh, you're supposed to be working out right now. Is that what you're doing? So sometimes we just need that little push, you know, in in the kindest of ways, of course. (laughs) But um, I'm really excited about that uh, option being added to our list of services because we want, again, to make it as convenient for the client as possible because we want you to go back home well. We want you to, you know, be able to continue to take these trips and keep your job and make your money for your family because you are important to them and you are important to you. So we are just in the business of helping out. Well, that that, that sounds really Wonderful, actually. And and I, I, what I have found is that accountability is such a huge part of coaching. It's probably half the reason why people hire you to be a coach is they want that external accountability um, to, to give them the plan mm-hmm. is one thing. But the whole to hold them accountable to the plan is is completely different. But that's where the results come from. So I think that's really great. And I really love Jen, how you can customize the level of accountability. And I mean, if, if that's all it takes for a person just to get a phone call that says, hey, did you work out today? Are you going to work out today? <laughs> you know, get off your butt and go down to the fitness room and <laughs> do what you got to do. Stop watching television. I mean, just knowing that call is there and that call is coming, uh, that can really make that that can make a difference in, in somebody's willingness to get up out of the hotel room and, and go explore the fitness room or just lay there across the bed and, and watch television. So I think that is really, really awesome. Uh, Jen, any final thoughts or words of wisdom that you would like to leave us with? Maybe a big motivational quote. 
Um, well, I don't have a quote. Um, I'm blanking on uh, all of them that I love right now. <laughs> but um, the only thing that I would love to leave with everyone is just, you know, basically the fact is, is that we all only get one time around, you know, and for me personally, I want to live it as well as possible. And regardless of my motivations, you know, whether it be family, finances, you know, living to a ripe old age, et cetera, et cetera, everybody has their own reasons. But if we don't live it well, you know, if we don't have our health, then we have nothing. Because, you know, you've heard people uh, say it all the time that money can't buy happiness, you know, money can't buy everything. And, there's a lot of people in the world that I know that obviously they have, you know, health issues, things that are going on in their lives. And if they could pay to get rid of them, then they would. But it doesn't always work like that. And so we need to be diligent and cognizant of what's going on right now, because if you have your health right now, this is the most energy that you're going to have. You know, this is the best that you are going to live for the rest of your life, because as we know, you know, the longer we live, the more we decline. And so we want to start now and live our best, wellest life right now. I, I so, think that's a that's a super motivational quote. And I, I think that is something that we should all take to heart, especially people that are working and traveling, building a business or or, or running a company or whatever the case may be. Um, if if you. If you destroy your body in the process, then who's going to produce <laughs> on your behalf? So yeah. let's take care of ourselves. And uh, Jen, if if this resonates with our listeners and they want to reach out to you to learn more, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Absolutely. We are um, in transition on social. So right now we are everything under Jen Whitmore Training. Um, but our website is www.rwtravelswell.com. And the RW is for Road Warrior and then Travels with an S. So rwtravelswell.com, you will be able to schedule all of your trips, your wellness itineraries. And if you want to follow us, find us on social at Jen Whitmore Training. Awesome. And, and we'll have that link on the Rebelpreneur website as well. So anyone who wants can go and check that out. I've been speaking with Jen Whitmer. She is an ACSM certified personal trainer with more than 12 years of experience in weight loss instruction, boot camp training, and teaching aerobics, water aerobics, swimming, and cycling. She is the creator of Road Warrior Wellness Concierge, and you can find out more at rwtravelswell.com. Jen, it's been a real pleasure to have you on Rebel Renewal Radio. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much, Ralph. I really appreciate you. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at rebelpreneur.com.